In this video, I'm gonna talk you through the basics of long exposure photography. What is meant by the term long exposure? What camera settings I recommend? What gear are you gonna need? And much, much more, so you can take photos like these. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I post weekly photography tutorials, I do gear reviews, as well as posting monthly photography challenges like this one. This is the Photo Genius Photography Challenge number 18, which is all about long exposure photography. So if you're new to my channel, let me quickly get you up to speed. I began the photography challenges back in March of 2020 as the world was starting to go into lockdown because of COVID-19. Every challenge is designed to help you take better photos by encouraging you to use the manual modes on your camera. Over the past few months, we've had thousands of people get involved in the challenges and take part, and there are literally thousands and thousands of images posted across social media. Now, photography challenges have included macro photography, portrait photography, nighttime photography, abstract, and many, many more. If you wanna find out more about the previous challenges, just check out my website. I'll put a link in the description below this video. Now, the challenges are absolutely free. I'd love to have you involved. And if you do get involved and you share your images on social media, please make sure you use the hashtag. Every month and every theme has a different hashtag. That way I and others can check out your images. And this month's hashtag is photogenius18. Now long exposure photography is all about utilizing the camera's shutter to take amazing photos. Using this technique, we can capture light trails. We can blur clouds in the sky. We can paint with light or capture the stars in the night sky and much, much more. But what exactly is meant by the term long exposure? So exposure is a term given to the amount of time between the camera shutter opening and then closing. When the camera shutter is open, the camera sensor is exposed to light, hence the term exposure. So a long exposure means that the camera shutter is open for a longer period of time. On this camera, I've got a fast shutter speed dialed in. It's one one thousandth of a second. Listen to the sound. I'll do that again. Now listen to the difference with a slow shutter speed. This is one tenth of a second. And you can clearly hear the difference. So a long exposure is a term meaning that the shutter is open for an extended amount of time. However, there is no definition of how long that time is. Now I think if you're talking about shutter speeds in terms of seconds, then it's fair to say it's a long exposure. So to make it simple for this challenge, any exposure that is one second or longer is a long exposure. So how do you slow down the shutter on a camera like this? Well, it's usually pretty simple. I recommend putting your camera in the manual mode and then locating the dial. It'll be on the back maybe of your camera. It could be on the top, sometimes on the front. And when you dial to the left, you will see the shutter speed displayed on the LCD going down. This is called slowing the shutter speed down. Now, if you keep dialing to the left, you will eventually see a number followed by what looks like a quotation mark. Now, this tells you that you're into actual seconds. So, one quotation mark is one second. Five quotation mark is five seconds and so on. Keep dialing to the left until you reach your maximum slow shutter speed. And with most cameras, this is usually 30 seconds. But most cameras also have a mode called the bulb mode. Now using the bulb mode, you can, if you wish, extend the shutter so it's open even longer. Now this has no limits, it's all down to the battery. So you can do a one minute exposure, but you can equally do a two minute, five minute, 10 minute, or even longer if you wish. Now, if you wanna know more about the bulb mode, I'll be talking about it later in this video, so make sure you stick around. This month's photography challenge will give you a better understanding of what the camera's shutter can do, both as a way of controlling light, but also as a creative tool. Now, there are a few different ways in which you can use a camera like this to do long exposure photography, but for this video, we're gonna be using the camera in the manual mode. And don't be worried if you've got a different camera, because you can copy the settings that I'm gonna to use to your camera, and the results should be pretty much the same. Just make sure you're using a camera that has manual functions. 
So to talk you through the camera settings for long exposures, I've set up a Canon camera here in the studio. Now, here's our shutter speed, and for long exposures, we want a slow shutter speed, and ideally one second or less. So I'm gonna start by dialing to the left to slow the shutter down, and I'm looking for one second, which will be the number one, followed by what looks like a quotation mark. There we go. So this is our one second exposure. Next, I'm gonna wake up the camera's meter by pressing the shutter button halfway down, and this should give us a light meter reading, which is currently overexposed. If you miss it, I'll press it again. Over to the plus three means we're letting too much light into the camera, and our image will be overexposed. So next, we're gonna drop the ISO from 200 to 100. I press the shutter button again just to check the light meter and we are still overexposed. So the next step is to adjust the aperture. The aperture is here shown as an F number. The bigger the number, the smaller the aperture and the less light through the lens. So I'm gonna wake up the meter, hold down the AV and dial to the right. The bigger F number again means the aperture is actually getting smaller in the lens and will let less light through the lens. And you can see this has had a effect on our exposure, which is slightly improved, but technically, is still overexposed. So this means currently we can't take a one second exposure in this room because it's too bright. Now this is the sort of problem you may come across if you're trying to do long exposures during the day. Now to simulate shooting later in the day, what I'm gonna do now is turn the lights down in the studio. So now the studio is darker, I'm gonna do another light meter reading by pressing the shutter button lightly and we see that we are now technically underexposed. So this means instead of a one second exposure, if we want, we can slow the shutter down even more to two seconds. And now we can take our two second exposure. So what this demonstration shows us is that the ambient light levels have a big impact on long exposure photography. So to see this technique working, let me show you how I captured this image a few months ago. To capture the image I was looking for, I arrived early and set the camera up with a great view looking down on the busy freeway with Brisbane City as the backdrop. For my first image, the shutter speed or exposure time was one third of a second. Just a few minutes later, less light and now the shutter is open for half a second. Now remember with photography, light is everything, so it's often a waiting game. I knew that if I waited, I would get the result I was looking for. Next image, 0.6 seconds. And finally, about an hour after first arriving at the location, I had the image I was after. An exposure time of 1.6 seconds, giving me the light trails from the moving vehicles, and a beautiful sunset as a backdrop to the city skyline. Now there are plenty of really cool and fun ways that you can explore long exposure photography, including light painting and something called ICM photography. ICM stands for Intentional Camera Movement. And before we get onto those, let me just remind you that if you are getting involved in this month's photography challenge, to please check out our Facebook group. It's free to join. We have lots of members from all over the world sharing their images. Now, of course, you can share your images to Facebook or you can share your images to Instagram if you do, just a reminder to use the hashtag so we can find those images. This month's hashtag, PhotoGenius18. Painting with light is lots of fun and can be done using a torch or any similar light source. When the shutter is open, you simply move the light source to create the effect. In our second photography challenge, I created these really cool images in the studio. And this fun image was taken during one of my photography workshops in Brisbane, the students using their mobile phones to spell out the word love. And for this image, the shutter was open for 25 seconds. The ball of light was created by me swinging a torch around whilst the camera's shutter was open. For more on this, take a look at the light painting challenge, link below this video. Intentional camera movement is a process where you actually move the camera whilst the shutter is open. This technique was featured in our abstract challenge and is a lot of fun. I had a go at this in my garden and was really pleased with the way the images turned out. I definitely recommend checking out the work of Andrew Gray who specializes in this form of photography. I'm a big fan of his work and the way he creates surreal images that look like paintings. To see more of Andrew's amazing images, check out his website, link below this video. 
And finally, a quick word about the bulb mode. Now look carefully at the stars in this image and you will see that rather than bright points of light, they are actually short lines. This is because the shutter was open long enough for the camera to record the stars moving across the sky caused by the Earth's rotation. The exposure time for this image was 1 minute and 9 seconds and this is done by using the bulb mode. Now to set the bulb mode you may have the letter B on your camera mode dial. If not you will need to select bulb by adjusting the shutter speed and it's usually found just after the slowest shutter speed or 30 seconds on most cameras. Once selected you connect a remote to the camera, you press the remote once to open the shutter and then a second time to close the shutter. How long you wait between the first and second press of the remote will determine how long the exposure is. Take a look at this image and see how an exposure time of 1 minute and 31 seconds has blurred the clouds as they move across the night sky. So I really hope you've enjoyed the video and you're keen to get involved in this month's challenge and I can't wait to see your images. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow and the more support I get, the more videos I can bring you guys. If you want to leave your comments, suggestions or just want to say hi, you can do so in the comments below. And of course, if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. Hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.